The parquet was to be waxed by evening. Servants were running and shouting around the winter palace, trying to get everything ready in time for the bowl. The most fragrant flowers were cut from the imperial orangery and placed in large bases throughout the hall. The best cooks were preparing chicken, soups, and desserts to amaze the aristocrats and the imperial family with their art. Meanwhile, in their apartments, the men were preparing to go out. Some wanted to show off their new honors on their uniforms. Others were looking for a bride. One way or another, everyone took a sauna or bath, and Nicholas I already had an analog of a shower cabin. Russian aristocrats were very fond of bathing in saunas with high temperatures. The last touch for men before going out was rubbed with birch tar boots made of tanned leather. The scent of tar was very strong and peculiar. For some, the scent of tar was unpleasant. Women in the Russian Empire prepared to go out into the world much earlier. Aristocrats took a bath, rubbing themselves with fragrant foam. There are paintings of the bathroom apartments of Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna, wife of Nicholas I, in the style of Moorish Spanish architecture. There is also a painting of the bathroom of Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna, daughter of Alexander II. In the late 19th and early 20th century, Brocard and Company soap was popular, from the French entrepreneur Henry Brocard, who lived in Moscow. His cosmetics factory became the most popular in the Russian Empire. It was the emperor's daughter, Maria Alexandrovna, who was particularly fond of elite soap of unusual shape. Broker's products won eight gold medals throughout Europe. In addition, Broker made products for the people, and for three kopecks, a peasant could buy his wife or daughter a small bath set. The aristocracy loved Brokar's products. Before balls, they rubbed themselves mercilessly with fragrant soap, and a few moments before going out, men applied a floral or citrus cologne. Women liked the perfume Orchidorum or Persian lilac. Earlier, in the mid-19th century, the court nobility had another favorite. Alfonso Rale founded a company called Raleigh and Company. Alfonso brought ingredients from Italy and France, but the perfume itself was made in Russia. His triumph was a perfume that noble women liked to apply in winter. This perfume was called Parfum de Furore. When applied to the skin in cold weather, the perfume revealed crystal notes for which they were immensely popular in high society. The whole ballroom was drowned in various aromas, waxed floor and boots, perfumes and colonies of the aristocracy, the subtle scent of fresh flowers and the seductive aroma of food. But towards the end of the event, it became stuffy after a few waltzes, the ladies and gentlemen were sweating profusely and the plume of sparkling wine did not evaporate until the next day.